Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Um, I've been having a rough couple of days, <clears throat> and some of you know, um, it's no secret, I, I make no secret of it, that uh, I, I live with PTSD over uh, some trauma that happened, uh, gosh, almost 40 years ago. And so, um, you know, through good therapy and, um, and good spirit and God's love and uh, wonderful family and friends, um, I've really developed quite a repertoire for how to deal with it uh, all these years. And most of the time, I mean, I can go weeks at a time without even thinking about it. <clears throat> but every once in a while, something will will trigger me and usually, you know, I spot it right off the bat now and I, I know what to do about it. Um, uh, for instance, when I had surgery, you know, that can be a trigger. And so, you know, I take precautions and I'm proactive when I can be proactive. Um, but this last week I have um, been triggered in a way that I don't often um, have to deal with, thank goodness. And um, it has to do with my startle response, which is why I'm not big on surprises. I mean, regular surprises I can handle, you know, surprise party or, oh, here's a big gift that I got for you, mom. You know, that kind of stuff I'm fine with. Uh, life altering surprises can throw me off center for a little bit, but again, I've learned how to cope and it doesn't usually uh, present a problem. However, it is that startle response which can really throw me for a loop. Um, you know, the adrenaline races and I become hyper vigilant about where's the next thing going to come from if it's a series of, of those things. And that's what's been happening. And I wanted to bring it up to you because um, I think that some of you deal with it too in a different way, unless you have PTSD and then it might be the similar way. But um, it's been mice. I've had mice in the house and more than I've ever had them before. And so starting today, I will be under contract with uh, a, a group of professionals who will take care of them for me because uh, that's what I need to have done over uh, you know, a, a long period of time. And yes, I have a cat. And yes, she's been killing them less, left and right. And yes, there have been double digits worth of mice killed in the last four or five days. And so, um, it's not a fear of mice as much as it is the darting and the surprising and the startling and um, moving something and one will crawl out, um, opening a trap where I've killed one and have a live one jump out too. I mean, it's just been <laughs> unbelievably awful. And so my, my whole body has been very rigid. And um, I was lying in bed um, uh, writing an email to a friend this morning and um, I suddenly realized I can deal really well, I think, with large issues, evil, um, uh, unfairness, negative energy, um, you know, racism, just all the isms, those big sort of nebulous things I, I'm okay with. I can deal with them. I know where I stand. I know how to help others. I know, I know, and I'm comfortable. It's the little things. It's the little things that dart in and out of my life, literally in this case. The little things are what throw me for a loop sometimes. And I think perhaps that's true for you. I don't know, is it? Um, the things we don't expect, it's the little comment here and there. It's the incessant nature of things that are upsetting us, which is why I think COVID has been so hard for us. It's it's kind of, yes, on a macro level, it's a big thing, but the, the ways that we have to change individually, you know, wear a mask, um, wash your hands more, um, uh, don't stand too close, um, don't hug them, don't shake hands. I mean, those things are really hard. Uh, they're so ingrained in us that um, I think it's been that series of things that has just made us all a little freaked out sometimes. And then we finally, you know, get used to that and we settle into it. And then something else comes along like the variants that we're hearing about now. And then something else comes along like the vaccine, but how do we get it? And what do we have to go through in order to get that? It's exhausting. And 
uh, for someone like me, when it's a trigger for something, then, you know, it becomes even more exhausting because like the adrenaline is shooting through my body um, and it feels like a constant thing. I read once that <clears throat> when we have um, a fear, something frightens us and adrenaline shoots into our bloodstream, it takes 20 minutes for a drop of blood to circulate through our entire body, 20 minutes. So that an initial fear that we might have around something lasts about 20 minutes. If, if it is longer than that, it's usually because our mind has been replaying it over and over and over again, and that's generating uh, more adrenaline or keeping us on the, uh, keeping us hyper vigilant or what my grandmother used to call on the quivy vivi. Um, it's keeping us hyper vigilant. So if that's the case, how many times do all of us go through life experiencing things and then recreating them up here to keep them going over and over and over again in this endless loop like the treadmill you know it just keeps going it just keeps going sometimes it speeds up sometimes it slows down but just keeps going with me and with something like uh, like mice but it doesn't have to be mice it could be anything that's invading our lives if they keep coming and they're at different intervals and you never know when they're going to be there it's like you know Pavlov's dogs you're always waiting you're always anticipating oh oh and salivating in my case not salivating as much as just becoming very rigid in my body and um, needing to do a lot of meditating and what would normally take me four hours um, putting together the worship service for Sunday editing it um, recording my parts, taking the other parts from other people, editing it, uh, the finished product, usually about four hours. Yesterday took me twice as long because I'm just being so hyper vigilant. So when the professionals come today, I know I can turn over responsibility of that to them. And in the meantime, I'm looking at how this is just a physical manifestation of what many of us go through, myself included, about things that dart into our lives, changes. Um, I think that's been part of the issue. I was listening to television this morning and they were saying, people who cover the White House are saying how they're having to adjust to a whole new way of being. And those who've been there longer than four years, um, they are recapturing how to do their jobs. But for new, people who've only been there for four years, it's a whole new deal. It's like they are not on the ready every moment for something new to happen, something catastrophic they have to cover, some comment, some tweet, some uh, policy change, some story, some absurdity, as they were saying. And life is much calmer for them there now so that they can really dive into the policies and uh, what's going on. I'm looking forward to getting back to that. Uh, it's also true that for uh, type 8 on the Enneagram, you know, our home is where we find our um, refuge. And I was talking to my friend last night who's an 8, and she reminded me that however, and for 8s, however we feel at the moment, we think we're going to be feeling that way for the rest of our lives. Which is great because we're so optimistic. <laughs> <clears throat> and usually that's, wow, that's a great thing, or we're so energized, wow, that's a great thing. When we are not, when we are sick, I remember when she had the flu a couple years ago, and she just thought, I'm going to be, I have to, I have to redo my life, I'm going to be sick like this for the rest of my life. Well, no, we're not, hopefully. Um, but if we, if, if something comes along, like mice, I had to remember last night in talking with her, Oh, uh, my house didn't used to be a haven for them, <laughs> God willing. In another, you know, couple of days, it won't be a haven for them any longer. Okay, I will have my house back. You know, it was that reminder that things aren't always going to be this way. Somehow, I think there's a message here for all of us in our spirituality during this time in human existence. What we're experiencing is not going to be here all the time. 
we can deal with the uh, the big things as well as the little injections that happen. We just have to keep breathing, keep ourselves as relaxed as possible, and recognize uh, truly God is in charge, and we can turn to other people for help. So that's my my message for the day, probably self-serving because I just needed to process. And as an extrovert, I process by talking. I just needed to process um, kind of what it is I'm going through. But I think this connection between how the mice dart in and out uh, unexpectedly and startle us, that can happen with good things too. Um, but it does happen in our lives all the time. So I invite you to think of what is it that's darting in and out of your life right now? And are you happy with it? So let's have more of it. Are you not happy with it? So remind yourself you don't have to live with it like this forever. And we can all get through this big time. All right. Thanks for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. And I'm not ready to joke about the mice yet, just so you know. Um, some of you have tried to do that, and it, it's, I'm just not there yet. But I will be. I'll get there. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm Pastor Deb Swift of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time with a prayerful pause of the pastor. Until then, be safe. God bless. And bye for now.